Cap? Hi, Dorcas. I bring you a tale, not exactly the history of Puddleford, but a thing that happened near Puddleford, and, and it is relevant to Puddleford because most villages have a patron of some kind, a, a patron saint usually, and um, this is uh, the tale of St. Dermot, the patron saint of Puddleford. Now, many, many years ago, when the, the new religion was brought to these lands hereabout, preachers would come around and attempt to convert the folk, and in some places they were well received, and in other places they were not well received, and they were driven away. But Dermot was one who was known for his ability to stir a crowd and to convert many who heard him, in fact, almost all. So he was on his way from town to town to town, and the folk of Pumford had, in fact, sent word to ask him to come and, and speak to them. For there were, they, they had no church as yet, but there were those who, who would adopt the new faith, and there were those who, who would hear it just out of curiosity's sake. Well, as it also happened, a great dragon, about this big, <laughs> was terrorizing the, 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 the countryside. It was the most confusing looking dragon. It was a dragon, it was small of course, it could fly and it would dive bomb the cattle and completely miss every single one in the herd. It would swoop over the flocks of sheep and reach out with its claws and come away with nothing. Um, it did occasionally manage to get one of the really old, slow somethings, you know, a cow or a, that was just about dead, just about ready to go anyway. So it stuck around because it was not really successful at hunting, but it was successful enough to stay alive. And they were great in great fear that the, the dragon would turn its attention to the folk of the town and would attack houses and, and this had not happened yet, and but they were, they were worried. And other things that could not move out of the way. Right, surely it would have better aim if whatever it was aiming at stood perfectly still like a house. <laughs> Haven't seen it happen yet, but they knew it was only a matter of time. So, a, a delegation knowing that Dermot, who wasn't yet a saint, he would grow into his sainthood I'm sure later, but knowing that Dermot was on his way from the next town to Puddleford and fearing that he might be easy prey for a dragon, they sent out, they set out to meet him on the road. He did not know this, of course, and he is walking along and he is he is singing psalms and walking and, and walking very slowly because he doesn't have a lot of breath, well, much like me. And yes, indeed, he surely made a good target for a dragon, a single person on the road, walking slowly, and here comes this dragon, swooping, <laughs> swooping down out of the sky, and just missing him. <laughs> Okay, what was that? It's too small to be a dragon. It must be a dragon. So he was afraid that, that of course, his end was near because dragons, of course, are very fierce creatures, and it was well known that, that a one man alone could not stand up to a dragon, could not hope to defeat, especially a cleric with no weapons and no armor. And so he stood still. I don't know why. Wouldn't you think he'd run? But no, he stood still, and he prayed for deliverance from this dragon. And it was given unto him a miracle. It was given unto him the ability to understand the thoughts and the speech of the dragon. And of course, as you can imagine, the dragon's thoughts were, damn, missed, damn. <laughs> and here it comes, wheeling about in the sky, coming in for another one. Oh, it's holding still this time. I know I'm going to get it this time. This one's holding still. And of course, and of course Dermot ducked, and the dragon missed him again. <sighs> dragon tumbled to the ground. It did not make a graceful landing, not at all. It tumbled to the ground, and it's sitting there. Of course, Dermot could understand its thoughts. And it was saying, I just can't see. I just can't see them. I, I, what is with this? I'm just hungry. I'm just, <laughs> I'm hungry. <laughs> and Dermot, being kind-hearted, approached the dragon, sitting on the ground, weeping, and oh. said to the dragon, for it was given to him to also speak to the dragon and be understood by the dragon. How can I help you, brother dragon? And the dragon 
was, of course, surprised that this man, A, approached him and spoke to him without fear, and B, could speak to him at all. And so, the dragon explained that he could not see his prey. He was hungry. It was his right to take the slow and the weak and to strengthen the herds by thinning out those that, that were not, uh, not good anymore. And, um, but he was hungry. He failed and he just didn't know what he was going to do because he just couldn't see, he was nearsighted or something. Well, Dermot looked upon the face of this dragon and said, I do believe that you have something in your eye. I don't believe that you have an illness in your eye, but I see something that perhaps I could assist you and wash this out of your eye. Let us go here to this puddle and let me see if I can wash your face and wash your eye and, and clear it so that you can see better. And this, of course, they proceeded to do. Meanwhile, the people from Puddleford are coming along and they had seen the dragon flying and they were afraid that the dragon had swooped upon Dermot before he had a chance to come to them and <laughs> preach to them and they were hastening on the path and as they came around a bend in the path what they saw was the dragon in the puddle and Dermot, the holy man, <laughs> with the water. <laughs> and they said to themselves, praise be, what an amazing person. He is able to convert and baptize a dragon. <laughs> <laughs> and they said, he is obviously in no danger. And they turned around and went back to prepare a place for him, knowing that he was on his way to Puddleford to preach to them. And they went and they told all of the story. They told everyone they met that Dermot was so holy and such a good creature that he could baptize a dragon. Meanwhile, the dragon, having had the whatever it was that had been plaguing him in his eye for the whole time, looked upon Dermot and saw him clearly, saw pretty much anything clearly for the first time in his life, and said, I can't eat you. I would thank you for your assistance. As hungry as I am, I'm not going to eat you. And Dermot said, yeah, no, I am told that far Far to the east of here, far to the east of here, there are lands where dragons are welcome and revered. And if you would go to the eastern lands, maybe not that far, just across the river, <laughs> you would find a place where dragons are revered and honored and welcomed. And you could take up residence, residence there and they would feed you. You would not have to hunt for yourself. And the dragon thought this was a great idea. And off he went flying, looking at things and being so happy that he had met a person who was kind to him. Meanwhile, when Dermot arrived in the town of Puddleford, all had already heard the story. He converted every single one of them 100%. And by doing so, this story uh, came to be known, and this contributed to eventually, when he grew into his, his uh, uh, sainthood, the miracle, the first miracle was told how he had converted the dragon, and Puddleford adopted him as their patron saint. And that's the story around Puddleford. <laughs>